Hey guys, welcome to another Focus on New Mexico Facebook Live. It is Friday. We should do these on Wednesday, but as the whole world's sort of upside down right now, it's how it goes. <laughs> it's okay. We're going to talk about masks today, the need for them, um, how the public is pitching in on helping medical folks and regular folks get masks and acquire them. I've got two great guests today. I'm really quite pleased you guys are joining us. One is Lauren Reichelt. She's with the Rio Arriba County and also the Rosie the Respirators group there. Thank you for co coming in, uh, Laura, coming in. You're there in your backyard. Sorry about that, <laughs> Lauren, thank you, appreciate that. And Emma Landry is from the Merry Mask Makers of Albuquerque, a group that's part of a bigger group that's uh, across the country that's doing these yes. kind of things for all kinds of different places. Thank you ladies so much. I, I just, this top Absolutely. subject is so important because, uh, Emma, uh, Emma, let me start with you. You know, as we know, the state had issued guidelines to wear a mask when you're out. The feds finally came around. Yeah. Dr. Fauci, the infamous Dr. Fauci would like to see us <laughs> wearing masks. And what got you into the idea of joining in the cause? What, what initially tipped you that you wanted to kind of get involved? So with I have a family member that lives up in Maine and she works with disabled adults. And so she is required to go to work. She is considered essential and she didn't have any masks. And so my uh, grandmother, who, who is her mother, she called me and she said, is there any way you can sew masks? So she knows that I sew and she was also a nurse. And so um, I guess it's kind of a way to honor her. I just have such great respect for her. Mm -hmm. And um, I get emotional. Uh -huh. I made almost 600 masks, basically in honor of her because she, she served for over 30 years as a nurse. Wow. And I just want to give back. I'm not brave enough to be a nurse myself, but um, if I can, I wanna help as much as I can to, to help these essential workers who are on the front lines and they could get sick. And if I didn't do something to help, I would I know I would regret it my entire life. Yep, I'm feeling you, I have no question. About <laughs> it, especially when there's a family member involved. I, I, nursing yeah. is an amazing profession. It's amazing. It is. And I know a number of nurses, I'm in awe of what they go through just to become an RN, let alone be an RN. It's just, it's an amazing thing. How, how many masks have you, so far, what's your setup with Merry Mask Makers? How, how does that all work and how did that all get organized? So Dawn originally made the group. She saw that there were people making masks and she's friends with my mom mm -hmm. and um, through the foster parent network. And so my mom said, hey, my friend made this group. Um, so she added me to it. And right off the bat, Dawn and I just started working together. I was sewing the masks and I was getting them to her where she was sending them out to her friends, to people that she knew that were nurses, doctors, people that were on the front lines that she knew needed masks. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, when we originally started the hospital, we're saying they were like, no, we're not taking masks right now. Um, but we were still handing them out to the doctors that were requesting them. Wow. And um, we just keep getting more and more requests. I mean, left and right, they are coming in faster than we can even make the masks. Wow. And each week, our goal is just getting higher and higher. I mean, it started with a thousand and now we're up to 4,000 oh. our goal. And we are really close to meeting that goal. And we have multiple women that are just jumping into sew and we have people donating money to buy more materials. And so we just have such a great group going right now. Everybody's pitching in and we just have masks flying in left and right, but we still cannot keep up with the number of requests we are getting. That's amazing. Wow. I, th I, I saw something on your Facebook page even a couple of days ago that 4,000 was a working number. At this yep, point. That is our newest goal right now. We want to get 4,000 and then I'm sure it's just going to get up to 10,000. I mean, right. so many requests coming in that it would not surprise me if we got up to 10,000. Wow, that's amazing. Lauren, let me turn to you for a quick sec up there and as in uh, outside of Española in Rio Arriba County. What do you do for the county specifically, first of all? Well, I am Rio Arriba County's Health and Human Services Director and I coordinate their health council. Gotcha. I, I appreciate your position there because you can speak to a couple of questions that I have as well. But first, let's start with the group, Rosie the Respirators. How did that all start? What was the impetus there? Well, the impetus was back in early March, I convened our, our clinics and our hospital, our first responders, everybody relevant, and I asked them, okay, where are we at? What do you need? And the clinics told us they didn't have a single mask between them. This is like nine sites and 
three federally qualified health centers. So um, we started initially our county EMS director and I tried to purchase masks and our efforts were completely underwhelming. I think like we broke all the purchasing codes and got two tiny boxes. Wow. And um, then we fortunately we discovered back from when we were preparing for H1N1, I had ordered a huge stockpile of masks and nothing ever happened. So they were in storage still. So the county manager discovered them and we were able to get those out to the clinics. And then the CDC came out with their guidance suggesting that nurses and doctors just tie a bandana around their face. And I thought that was the most bogus thing I'd ever heard. So I went out and purchased a bunch of bandana fabric and we started Rosie the Respirators and it's this, we call them seamsters. So it's a group of seamsters and it's grown. <laughs> we're not producing anywhere near what Emma is. We're a little more disorganized, um, but we, we have gotten a whole bunch of um, fabric. It, it's a medical fabric used for autoclaving from a hospital that can be used to make actual N95 masks. So we have our, our most proficient seamstresses are doing that. And then we have um, one fellow who's a friend of our commissioner in Albuquerque, and he is, he is 3D producing masks. And so he's making a bunch of them. And then we have a, another couple of, um, a, another guy who is 3D producing face shields. And then we also found a bunch of hospital beds in an old nursing home that we had purchased. And so we just are in the process of sending some of those out to Rehoboth McKinley, and we gave some to Espanola Hospital and some are going to Taos Holy Cross. So we're kind of whatever we can get our hands on. Right. Let me, let me peel back on something there real quick and make sure I understand as a lay person, you can actually make N95, you know, equivalent masks for, for health yes. workers. Yes, there is um, uh, an anesthesiologist in Florida who put something on the web about it. It's a particular fabric you need to get from a hospital. Fabric's not the word, it's uh, polypropylene. Gotcha. Um, and so it's like a blue thing they use to wrap surgical instruments in when they autoclave them. And we've turned our instant pots and canners and, and uh, 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 pressure cookers into autoclaves. Nice. <laughs> so, <laughs> That's awesome. So we're really like raiding our, 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 our uh, garages for this. Right. That's amazing. Well, let me ask the both of you. I'll start with uh, Emma on this one. Uh, again, as a lay person, when you, when you try to read about masks and catch up on them, uh, the recent thing that I've caught up with is quilting material is actually much better. We, we just joked about bandanas, of course. They're, they're pretty thin. But what is, it, what is it about quilting material that makes that so much better for a mask? So you want the tighter knit fabrics because then when, say, when you're breathing in, it stops whatever is outside of your mask from getting inside of your mask. Okay. And what, what I've noticed is a lot of the time our masks are going to people who are putting them over their hospital mask. And so it's just helping make their hospital mask last, lo last longer. Gotcha. So these are not meant to completely keep everything out. I mean, there's no way that they could be as effective as a hospital grade mask, mm -hmm. but, um, like my mother had to take my younger brother to urgent care the other day for some stitches, which was fun. But uh, she said they were wearing their cloth masks and they were, um, so some of mine I've made with pockets. This is a little kid one. Oh, I made cool. with pockets and they're tucking their, or their mask that they're given into this so that it makes it last longer. I so they see. cloth mask and keep their mask safe and clean as long as they possibly can because I mean, they're out of supplies. And so this is at least helping them make it last. What, what about the washability factor? I read about that a lot, that folks can take masks, of course, and wash them after every wearing. Yeah. Is that, is that so, true? Does that help? Uh -huh. These can be washed, absolutely. They can go in your washing machine. You can hand wash them, no problem. And they will work just fine after they're washed. So you can sanitize them very easily. And that's what is so helpful is that they can be washed when their masks that they're given from the hospital, it really can't be thrown in the washing machine. And so these, they can boil them, they can 
can get all the germs off and then just reuse it. And hopefully it'll help just be another line of protection while they're battling this on the front lines. Right. Hey, you could it, throw them in your instant pot too. You could. <laughs> yes, absolutely. <laughs> so awesome. <laughs> Let's talk about materials and what I'm noticing uh, for both organizations is finding materials sometimes rises and falls, meaning someone will post in yeah. to Facebook saying, I had a bunch of stuff. And then some post in like 10 minutes later saying, I need a bunch of stuff. It, yeah. it seems very hard to keep up with Emma that how are you doing with materials? Are, are you getting enough donations and things? Yeah. So I, some people have actually donated money. And so I safely wore my mask with my hand sanitizer, went to Walmart <laughs> and I bought ton of fabric and so I bought probably 10 yards of just the cotton flannel that we're using for the inside of our masks and then um, Joanne's actually donated three bolts of regular cotton fabric to go over the front part of our masks and so we have a ton of fabric and we have we, we keep getting people every day that are saying hey I went through I found some fabric and I drop it off and right. they'll literally just drop stuff off on my doorstep and we just disperse it amongst the group members, whoever needs fabric, they just let us know and we make sure they get what they need. And the That's one thing that we uh -huh. have had a hard time with is finding elastic. And ah. so my, with my pattern, we're actually using um, hair ties. Mm -hmm. So you can see with my pattern, we have oh, sure. ties that I'm buying from the dollar store. You can get a hundred of them for a dollar. and. Mm -hmm in so they they are not super uncomfortable and i just tuck the metal piece right inside so you just get this elastic but the the way that i do my pattern as well is there's a loop here so that if they want they can also add a tie so if ah. their ears get worn out and they don't want to have something on their ears they can add a tie to it and they can just wrap it around and tie it onto their head that's a great idea that's terrific wow well, we have we have a bunch of hoarders up here <laughs> so, so basically, uh, we had we we went through people's sheds, and you would not believe the amount of um, strange stuff we found. Huge right. spools of binding tape, and we've used those for the ties, the hair mm -hmm. ties also, and a lot of fabric. And one woman, um, uh, she had made. She was a hairdresser, and 20 years ago, she got the idea that she wanted to make gowns. Uh, to sell to hairdressers and then she decided she didn't like marketing so she had she made 800 gowns and she stored them in her shed so we went and we pulled all these gowns out and distributed them to the clinics <laughs> that's an amazing barn find i don't think i've ever seen a cable show that featured you know gowns as barn finds that's funny well it, the, the best part it, though was when the um when her husband was trying to drive the tractor and he's blind, so he was driving the tractor to move the gowns. That's awesome. <laughs> and his daughter was screaming at him. It was so northern New Mexico. I'm actually jealous. I think that's actually very cool. <laughs> now, uh, take me through the network of northern. Let's go get back to northern New Mexico for something real quick. I'm glad you reminded me. Um, we've got St. Vincent's and a number of other facilities out there. How many facilities are you trying to serve in where in in northern New Mexico? Well, we're I'm trying to work with the facilities north of Santa Fe. Okay. There's a pretty robust group in Santa Fe serving Santa Fe. And so uh, we have Española Hospital. Um, I had a team of people calling yesterday just to try and establish the need. And mm -hmm. so we had them calling Española Hospital, um, Rehoboth McKinley Hospital, San Juan Medical Center, Union Colfax, um, Los Alamos Medical Center. I think those are the ones we're really looking at. And then there are a whole bunch of small clinics. Many of them have actually closed down. So, uh -huh. so we're looking at what are the need, what's the level of need. Um, the N95 masks are going to go be prioritized to providers who are likely to really be exposed to COVID mm -hmm. and the face shields. And we're going to start with Rio Reba because that's my job. And then we're going to look at who has the highest concentration or who has the most, the, the largest outbreak. And that's how we'll prioritize. Um, the, the cloth masks, because I, I cannot produce, my group can't produce nearly as many as Emma's cranking out there. We are prioritizing people who come into contact with the public a lot. 
So I you see. have one Walmart worker or one Lowe's worker might see 300 people in a day. And the mask isn't going to keep you from catching this, but it can keep you from spreading it. Mm -hmm. So we want to look at who's most likely to be a vector and um, give them the mask so that we will not see as much spread. And then we're telling everybody else how to cut up socks to turn them into masks because you don't have to sew to do it. All you need is an unmatched pair of socks. Right, exactly. Are you finding, are there retailers coming to the county requesting masks for their employees? Have you had any of that happen yet? Uh, Powake Market did, but the rest of them, we went to them and everybody was very happy to receive them with the exception of Walmart. Um, I'm really complaining a lot about Walmart lately because not only were they not doing any social distancing the last time I was in the store, none of their workers were wearing masks except for the meat and produce people. Mm -hmm. And when I asked why, I was told they weren't allowed to buy any any cleaning supplies or masks or gloves and they weren't given any. And so um, we tried several times to call them to offer them masks and they told us that they were in a meeting, they'd call us back. They never did. After three calls, I just gave up and reported them to the state police and the secretary of health and talk about it on every TV radio show that I can in the mm -hmm. hopes that somebody will come down on Walmart and make them be good corporate citizens. You know, I've seen issues of complaining about that in a number of places that they're not allowing their employees for fear that the look would not be a good one for the company, which is a crazy place to be right now. And I'm also yeah, well, picturing the, the, the look might prevent their customers from dying. Right. Oh, so, and their right. employees. It's kind of simple to me. That's right. Crazy. I'm also thinking about how busy that particular Española uh, Walmart is. I, I've been in there a half dozen times or more. It is bombed with people every time I go in. I couldn't even imagine distancing in that particular store. That's got to be a challenge. Boy. Yeah, the last time I was in there, it was impossible. There was a, a woman behind me who was, her kids were touching all the food. I was buying for some sick people and the kids oh. were touching the food and then she was leaning over and breathing on it. And I asked her to please back off. So she backed off about two inches, oh. but it's very crowded in there. You know, it's interesting when I, it's easy to get caught Emma in thinking that everyone's sort of in on this. I know in my particular peer group and my Facebook feed, there's a lot of mask activity but for a lot of people, this really hasn't quite hit them quite yet to, to do this. Are you, are you finding that you, know, you, you have to reach out to people and sort of convince them? Or are, you, or are you preaching to the choir, so to speak, and people come to you and they already understand the need for the mask? It, or a mix of both? How, how's it happening for you guys? Honestly, I, we, we just keep getting requests. I mean, I've even had friends that have reached out to me because they know that I'm making them. And they've just donated money so that I can buy more fabric to help mm -hmm. cause because they do have to go to work and they do understand how essential this is. You know, you need to protect yourself, but you also need to remember that you're also protecting other people right. when, when you're social distancing or you're wearing a mask. Um, it's not just about you. It's about the people that struggle with autoimmune deficiencies and whatnot. Um, you know, I, myself, I'm actually a cancer patient and I have celiac disease. And so I would be more susceptible to catching it. And so for my family, they've been really great about um, wearing their masks that I made them and being clean and just making sure that they're staying away as much as possible. And I think that a lot of people are catching on. Um, I mean, there are, there are there's always going to be a few that just don't care. But right. I think a lot of people have, they have started to realize like this is something to take seriously. You know, when you look at the amount of activity on Etsy even, you know, one of my pet theories is this is not like, Imagine like all Americans wearing the same colored medical, that sort of light blue mask. That's a different look than what I see on Etsy, which is a lot of creativity. There's a lot of yeah. really fun fabric out there. There's so many fun, yeah, fun like, you know what I mean? I love yeah, that. See, I think I've got so some cute. balloons for kids and love it. yeah. Love it. So I mean, it's more than, it's also a fashion statement. So. Right, right. <laughs> That's where I think we're headed, actually, in about two weeks. I think once people start to realize we really have to do this to help each other, as you, as yeah. uh, Lauren was saying a second ago, that it's like, okay, the second question is, what's me? What, you know, what is my personal you know, style that I can bring to the masking kind of a thing? It's kind of interesting. Um, I can't sure. thank you guys enough for spending some time to do this. This has really been 
Um, very enlightening. I, we must thank Dawn, first of all. She uh, couldn't yes. make it. But the fearless leader that she is, she reached out to you, Emma, and got it got it squared away. And I, I appreciate you coming sure. in to do this. Just no problem. Congrats Anytime. to your group. It's an amazing thing to see. Now, if folks want to contribute, I'll get, I'll, Lauren, I'll ask you the same thing in a second. But Emma, for, for Merry Mask Makers of Albuquerque, if folks want to get involved somehow, what's the best way to do that? Um, they can join our Facebook group. It's just Merry Mask Makers of Albuquerque. Um, or we also have an email address that we're asking people to send their requests to, or if, I mean, they can send an email pretty quickly. So it's uh, abqmakers at uh, gmail.com. So if you want to makers email, at gmail. Okay. Yep. You can gotcha. just send us a quick email and just say, Hey, I have fabric to donate or, Hey, I have an order. We were hoping to get some masks. So just let us know. Are there any, any particular materials you're looking for at this point? Um, we want hundred percent cotton materials. Um, they can be made with all completely cotton or cotton flannel as well. Um, so mine on the backs of mine, I'm putting the cotton flannel because it's a softer mm. and it's, uh, when you're wearing it on your face, it's not as scratchy and it, uh, it's just more comfortable. Makes and a difference. So yeah. You put the flannel on the inside. It's just, it's more comfortable for them, but cotton, we want hundred percent cotton. And last question before I get to Lauren, do you, you make masks with pockets do you have any particular advice for people about what to put in those pockets to make that mask more effective? Um, so I'm not putting anything in the pockets. I'm just making them with pockets because okay. at the hospital, um, some of them are putting like filters in, coffee filters I've heard, or like the workers, um, the nurses and doctors, they're putting their actual masks inside the two layers of fabric to protect it so that it'll, it'll last longer. Gotcha. Gotcha. We've been using uh, dish towels are almost as effective as an H95 mask. Huh. So we've been cutting up dish towels. Yes. Also, HEPA vacuum cleaner filters right. are I've heard really that good. One. Yeah. Yeah. So and so we have cutters who just cut cut filters for us. Um, uh, usually those fabrics are and also interface we use. Uh, oh, so yeah. we make interface, interface filters and then we hand them out separately and you can put them in the little pocket. Gotcha. I had heard or read, I should say, that um, actually shop towels were effective. The, the I've heard that one as well. Yeah, the, the, there's something about the fabric that it's not a woven fabric. It's actually a, either chemically bound and it actually yeah. two to three times more effective. And I have a bunch of shop towels here. So that's what I've been yeah. stuffing inside my masks <laughs> is just a, a look of the shop towels. So yeah. So for Lauren, you for your group, that, uh, that sanitary good. napkins would work very well too. Okay, there you go. And, that's, and that's, adult diapers, anything like that. Yep, th th no joke there. These are the times we live in. Absolutely. So for donations for your group, Lauren, what are you guys looking for in uh, Rio Arrebo County? What, what's best for you guys? Well, we really need hair ties and elastic very badly. We're looking for two ply polypropylene polypropylene. Yes, right. I keep wanting to call it polyurethane and that is absolutely something you don't want to breathe. <laughs> and of course, 100% cotton fabric. We will also accept old sheets. They make good gowns. Um, and uh, I guess I already said elastic. You can't say elastic enough, huh? <laughs> That's what I'm reading. Yeah, for sure. Exactly. Oh, and vacuum cleaner bags and um, dish towels. Gotcha. That's a good list. And how, what's the best way to reach you folks? Is it at the county or yourself personally? What's the best way to go? Well, you can go to um, Rosie the Respirators on Facebook. Mm -hmm. And we have, if you want to volunteer to work with us, there's a Google sheet up there and you can fill out the Google sheet and either Sara Swati Khalsa or Cheryl Marita will call you um, within a day or two. Mm -hmm. um, you can send donations to El Centro Family Health. Send them care of to Rosie the Respirators Care of El Centro Family Health. Okay. I think their address is 935 North Paseo de Oñate, Española 87532. Um, but you can always find them on uh, you can find them on online as well. Mm -hmm. um, and. I, I'm open to, well, I probably won't give out my phone number because then the phone will just be ringing all right. day. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> it's a lot of reach here. You got to be careful of those kind of things. Yeah. We'll, we'll double check that address also for, for that organization. We'll put it in the thread below and, uh, and, and we'll make sure we get that information out there as well. 
And and for supplies, we're asking you to send those to the county, and that would be Rosie the respirators, 1122 Industrial Park Road, Española, New Mexico, 87532. And that's care of Rio Reba County. Perfect. And that's the beauty of these Facebook Lives is the thread will stay up. People will stumble on this tomorrow, tomorrow night. The information just gets out there more and more. Lauren and Emma, I cannot thank you guys enough. I want to say bless your hearts for Mary Mask Makers of Albuquerque and then Rosie the Respirators. I just, it's the, the you're doing God's work. I just got to say it. You're just doing it right now. I can't, uh, I can't say it enough. And to Emma, to your sis, absolutely. It, you know, for all RNs out there, we want everyone to come home safe when this is all over. And thank you for doing your bit as well. And thank you, uh, Lauren, as well, up in Española. And thank you, guys. We'll see you uh, Friday night on Channel 5.1. We'll be talking more COVID-19 and its effects across New Mexico. So we'll see you then. Thank you, ladies. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Okay. Right thank on. You.